Okay, when people hear about you and they'll hear about you through social media, through art shows, through uh, word of mouth, hopefully, through um, whatever publication you've been in, they always invariably end up going to your website. So your website has to be the thing that confirms all of their hopes and dreams about you. You know, that's kind of maybe sounds a little excessive, but they go to your website in order to understand you better, to get the communication they need to find confidence in your art and to get all the answers that they may have about your work. And your website has to be effective at communicating all those things and more. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the layers of communication on your website. We're going to talk about um, calls to action, both directive, both direct and passive. We're going to talk about SEO, communication, design, process plans, the transformation that you offer. I want to discuss home pages. I want to discuss contact pages and the about me page. We're going to talk about the individual art page for each of the artworks on your website. And we're going to talk about collecting. Then we're going to get into a little bit of um, back office stuff like the Facebook pixel and SEO and things like that. All right. Your website should offer um, an offer above the fold, an obvious call to action, images of success, and all with as few words as possible. So we're going to jump into that with this lesson and hopefully you can take these examples that I'm going to share with you and apply them to your website. You might have to adapt, you might have to mold, but these are the things that are, need to be present in your website for it to be effective. Now, on top of that, this website or this lesson is not going to be a how to build your website lesson. I'm not going to show you where to put your art or how to work in WordPress or Wix or Squarespace or any of the dozen places that you can build a website on and build a website well. That's not what this is about. There's too many to go for and I have only used Wix, Squarespace and WordPress and of them all, excuse me, WordPress, I mean Squarespace is what I found to be the best. Wix is really easy to use but it's a piece of shit and WordPress is great but requires more developer computer knowledge than, um, than I have and that most of you have. But it's up to you on how you want to do that. So um, we're going to talk about these things. We're going to leave the actual mechanics of the website for another place for you to learn. And let's jump in. Okay, so this is the fun one. This is the pages where you share your artwork. And there are a lot of things I want to get into about this. So buckle up, this one might be a little bit deeper um, on the actual kind of mechanics and structure of a web page. And uh, I think that um, what's fun about sharing your art on the web or the really important thing about sharing your art itself is that you want to recreate or replicate the in-person experience to the highest degree possible. Like if I could, let's say, do a video with every piece of my art printed on a wall or just uh, you know in a, in a shop somewhere and do a, a video tour of the artwork, I would. All right, that's big bucks, big money type thing, but I wanna recreate the in-person experience as closely as possible, okay? So on that note, I see tons of artists' websites that are just, um, their artwork is in this sort of gallery format that um, is, I guess, great. You know, you click on it, it shows the image a little bit bigger. There's very little description. There's no call to action. There's uh, no um, repetition and no presentation that would, bring someone closer to experience the art as if they were there in a person. And that is a major, major failure on the part of a lot of artist websites, okay? Because you are an artist, but you're selling a product. In the end, you're selling something that goes on a wall, that stands on a vase, or that is a, on a platform, what have you. You're selling a product and you need to show people that product, okay? So that's the mentality or the, 
idea that I built um, my website about. Now, if we go to my website, not the back office, and let's click on landscapes, you'll see that my work is sort of presented as a, like a gallery page would be, um, where you have the images in a grid, and the difference being when you click on one of these, you end up on your own on its own microsite instead of adding instead of clicking it and just opening up a bigger preview of it with a small description which is all that a gallery would afford you is a larger image and a caption and uh, instead you end up on a microsite so let's look at what that looks like so instead of having a gallery I have an index each one of these is an index of individual web pages. And that gives me the ability to add all this other functionality into um, my, web, my website. So let's go back to basics. We need to tell them why they're here. We need to uh, give them as much information as we can. Um, and we need to have a call to action that is above the fold. So here is basically the fold and you have, they're seeing a piece of art, there's a presentation of the art and here is your call to action. Um, now I don't sell work, there's no buy now button on my website. There's a lot of reasons for that. Logistically, it's a really difficult thing to do uh, because my website is set up as individual pages and because I'm one person, if I were to do that the other way, then I would have to set up some sort of cart item for each one of these pieces and then put it in here and it would be a huge pain in the ass. So um, I don't do it like that. I also like the idea of exclusivity and uh, the personal nature of working with buyers. So um, in order to buy from me, you have to request a quote. Now this request a quote is right here. It's repeated on all of these pages, okay? And I'm in the process of adding this to all of them, but all the new work has this explanation and a call to action to request a quote, all right? So title, artwork, call to action. And then I romance the story. So here is a really big thing about art and a, lot of, and a big thing that I don't see a lot of artists do. Um, and that is telling the why that this piece of art is important. Now, if you go to my website and you go to Room for One, this is actually one of the best um, descriptions of why I made a piece of art or why it was important to me um, and why the, the, the moment that this was created in was important because I'm a photographer, so it's somewhat about that moment. But there's a, there's a catch there for the photographers who are watching this and even for the painters who go out and paint in, uh, you know, go out to nature to paint. I forget what that's called. But um, sharing the experience of the photograph or of the event is not the same as sharing your why. So a lot of photographers have these mostly fabricated um, epic stories about uh, how they went and took the picture and there was the rain and there was the hike and there was the lightning and then there was uh, who else knows what the hell happened out there. You got, you broke your ankle, you fixed your ankle, whatever, you know, you carried your pack or maybe you're a painter, you had to carry this big canvas all the way up the mountain with you and set it up and keep it dry and things like that. You know, that tells a part of the story, but that doesn't tell the why and the reason that you climbed that mountain and the reason you sought out that particular vantage. Because if you're just taking a picture because it's pretty, uh, you're probably not creating something with any meaning. So um, creating that meaning for your client, for your customer or collector, or whatever you want to call them, is really important. And that's what I call romancing the art. So um, this is a major part of each one of my websites, this romancing the art section. I call it a note from the artist. And um, some are more elaborate than others, and some are much more um, in-depth and thought out than others, uh, but they're all there. And the why is really important. And it's consistent with that paragraph that was on my, my about page. And it's consistent with the message that I talk about in my emails and, and all that stuff. So I can't 
foot stomp, podium kick about this enough. The why is super important, right? And this is some place where you can get into more of a long form story because uh, this is when people are really interested in learning about why this piece of art is important. Okay, now we're talking about recreating the experience of being there in person with the art. So I have these examples of pieces of, of artwork in homes. Now, again, there is a tutorial on how I make these. Um, creating realistic art renders for your website and clients. Okay, that's right there. It teaches you how to do it. I'm not going to get into it, uh, but there it is. And then um, one of the things that I'd like to do on this page and on all the pages is answer as many questions as I can about the artwork for the collectors. They don't have to ask me. Okay, here's your chance to learn everything you can about this artwork. So for me, that is uh, the sizes that it's available and this about the print section. Now, even though there's a section here about collecting and frames, um, I put it with every piece. And you know what? I shit you not. I still get questions all the time. But maybe sometimes I don't get a question from someone. But this is a description about um, the, the substrate that I print on, uh, why I use it, and the frames, right? And then I have this, um, these examples of the piece framed. So this is just a brown and a black frame. Um, I'm very particular about this one. I just want to present it a certain way. And uh, so that's why I have it like this. Now, one thing that this page, oh, we'll keep going. So um, contact form again. So here it is. And then if you were to open up this contact form, it would, it would have uh, the same back office properties where it goes to my email address and they get saved in my uh, MailChimp marketing thing. So, um, so that. Now, there, this is missing something. Like in the email that I sent out, I think I can even go, uh, I'm on a sidetrack again, but bear with me. This is my filing system for all of the art that's in my portfolio. Oh, no, not here. But I have saved somewhere detail shots, like zoomed in on this portion, zoomed in on this portion, zoomed in over here. And I know for a fact that uh, we can go to landscapes, Aventasora, and we have thumbnail close-ups. So if you've shown your art in, art in person, um, if not, take, your, take my word for it, but people just walk right up and they put their nose right there so they can see the art as close as possible. And I don't understand why when I have this eight foot piece of art that the viewing distance is really 10, 12 feet away, they still walk up and they put their hands behind their back if you're lucky and they're respectful and they go like this, okay? So let's recreate this for people by giving them these uh, close-up examination pieces. So it's just click on a thumbnail for a close-up of the artwork. And uh, every one of my pages should have that, but they all don't. Um, it's just a thing that I have to go through and take screenshots of 100% zooms and, and put them in there. But um, that is something that you could or should um, add to your art, uh, your art page because you're recreating that process as closely as possible. And um, yeah, if we look at this one, Again, artwork, call to action, and then note from the artist. Here's a much more brief one. Some examples of the artwork in homes. Hey, look, there's two pieces there, and uh, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, now let's get into some of the structure of, of this. Okay, so your website here is your opportunity to do a few things like um, set up your SEO and things like that. So if on Squarespace, if you go over here and click on this little buddy right here, um, I have a page description. So whenever Google, someone Googles and if somehow they Google a hammock in Indonesia and it comes up on their website, the Google description, when you, when you do a search and it, and it gives you an entry, there's always a bit of text about the web page. Well, that text comes from this page description. 
So you want to make sure that you have that. And, um, and it's, again, I just copy and paste it and put it here. Here's what it would look like on social media if you looked up, um, if some search term ended, you ended up, landed the customer on a, a, a series of pages that had my work on it. So um, uh, again, so this is the SEO description and uh, this is just taking it straight from my general. Okay, then we have a social media image. Now, your social media preview, this is actually a little new because we already have this preview image. This is the thumbnail that shows up on the index page, which looks like a gallery. Uh, so when I share this image, generally most social, when I share this site, generally most social media um, platforms will take this thumbnail image or this banner image and use it as the uh, preview image on social media, okay? But if it doesn't, then you should probably come in here and put a, put a picture. So why don't we just do that? Because I'm here anyway. So hit R for room for one. And then I have this squared image for it. Or maybe, yeah, we'll use that. All right. And then you have an advanced section where you could put code, but if you put code in your header of your website, like for your Facebook pixel, which is super important in building websites, uh, might as well talk about that now. Um, the Facebook pixel, which again, we talk about uh, la -da -da, using public data. Oh, um, installing the Facebook pixel right here and then how to use it in creating ads and whatnot. You, um, that would go in the header of your website, like the main header, which you'll find somewhere else, not here. But you could put code on your individual web pages for whatever purposes. That's what that section is. Uh, don't stress out about it. Um, your URL slug should keep the name of the artwork in it. So this, um, I know on WordPress, um, is sometimes a random thing that you can adapt. But for Squarespace, it takes the name of the page over here and just puts it in here. So if it didn't, then I would have to go in and manually change this. And that's important. So page is enabled, it's not password protected, page description or whatnot. But um, this is where the SEO for your page is developed from. One of the places, okay? So place number one is on these descriptions which lend themselves to Google searches or Bing searches or Yahoo searches or what have you. It's scaring me that it's, okay. So um, the other source of SEO comes from all this stuff that you wrote here, okay? All right, the third source of SEO comes from alt text. Now alt text is the text that describes an image on your website because Google can't see images. They can see that there is a picture. They can pull that picture and you put it in some other place where you have search results. However, Google cannot read your image. Google, Google cannot look at this and say it's a black and white doc on, uh, in Bali, okay? Now you can, uh, on any platform, on Squarespace, you hit edit and then there's a design note and I have the caption for the image. So. On the caption, it says black and white photograph from Gili Air in Bali, Indonesia. A hammock hangs above the ocean shore on a cloudy day. Two boats float in the background. That's a description of this artwork. And uh, this is what Google reads about this. Now, I don't want to show that. So I just hide the caption. Google still sees it. The person viewing your website does not. And um, and then there's some other options, but the alt text is how you describe pictures. Now, there is well over 2,000 images on my website. When you uh, consider that every one of my website has this, and then it has several of these, three to five, and then it has anywhere between two and 10 of these. So let's say there's eight here, uh, 13, 14 images, over 100 images in my portfolio. Um, it's a lot of alt text to write, but it does have its value. However, 
big stop right here. I want to clear up. Um, I want to clear up a misconception about SEO. Okay, I would say that 95% of non-local traffic does not come from SEO. It comes from publications, um, which include um, print and editorial, as well as online competitions and awards, um, YouTube videos, and, uh, and then social media. 95% of any traffic that's gonna come to your website is gonna come through those sources, not through someone typing in black and white hammock, which is actually a really specific term, so it might end up here. But if they type up black and white ocean image, then, uh, or even moody black and white ocean image, they're gonna get billions of images, millions of images, or millions of search results. And, uh, and you're not gonna show up there. It's gonna be a very unreliable um, resource for you to attract traffic, okay? However, you do wanna have this stuff for the off chance, that other 5%, um, that really specific person, or that just really complete website. But SEO versus social and uh, other publication traffic. Uh, if you're going to spend your time somewhere, spend it in social and the other things because those are, have much more efficacy in getting found. Now, that's for the broad search results. For the narrow search results, um, when people look for art online, they look locally. People look for art online, they look locally. So, uh, when someone in... Um, New York City wants a piece of art, they look up art galleries on Google so they can go look at art. So that is local SEO. Now that you create your own business on Google and you, uh, and you popula popula populate that, uh, that thing and then you can populate a Yelp, whatever. Um, if you only have your home, then make it a by appointment only um, type thing but uh, you wanna show up for all the people who are searching locally. So that is an SEO thing that you wanna do. Okay? All right, we didn't make any changes here, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Did we make any changes? I don't remember. Um, so if you didn't catch that or didn't really hear all of that, I suggest going back and uh, you know rewinding the last three or four minutes and listening to that again, because it's really important. Uh, where are you gonna spend your time? What is most effective right now, as of the end of 2019, um, getting published and uh, things like that. Oh, by the way, there's a module in here about getting published, so um, yeah. Do, 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 okay. Let's move on to the next section.